thank you uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me opportunity to interview you for my youtube channel and podcast that's all right it's fun it's quite interesting so yeah we'll look forward to it i'm gonna try yeah so sorry i took uh, more time uh, of yours to come it's fine no worries it's fine i'm, I'm glad to chat it's fine can you please introduce yourself to my audience yeah sure um i'm chris godber i'm a uh, developer a programmer I do a creative work as well so i've got a bit of a background as an artist I uh, mostly I do a bit of game dev too, um, but my most mostly what I'm work on is web development for my career, um, and I do a bit of indie game dev as well. So, um, so I mean, in terms of like specific technologies I work with, um, so I'm mostly a JavaScript developer, I guess. I've been working with React a lot in the last few years, uh, or more recently, I've been sort of specialising a bit more in the niche of uh, FreeJS and uh, A-Frame and that sort of thing. I've just been working on an augmented reality app, actually, on a contract, so that's been interesting. Sort of, um, yeah, that's a bit of a quick intro, I suppose. So you are into coding from? Uh, say again, sorry. Uh, you are into uh, development from? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I uh, I studied computers, computing. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time, really. Because I'm I'm 35 now, so I've been doing it. Uh, I'm since I was. I guess I mean I started programming when I was probably about in some way anyway when I was about 16, I suppose. Uh, and I went to college and university and all that and. Uh, yeah, I've just been doing it ever since. Uh, we're mostly mostly just doing web development, really, for most of it. I've done a bit of e- uh, e-learning development as well. So, yeah, a bit of all sorts, really. So I'm sure you might have did uh, a lot of projects. Yeah, I've worked on quite a few diverse range of projects, yeah. Um, so i worked for a few different companies as well. Like, I've worked, I worked for a games company not long ago doing... Um, working on their React application. It's a game called um, uh, Occupy White Walls. It's like an art game where you basically, it's a bit like Minecraft, except you build uh, an art gallery. And I worked, they had a React application, uh, which is basically like an online repository for the artwork that's in the game, because you could upload your own artwork and, and that sort of thing. So I worked on Cultura, which is that, that side of things for I think just under two years, actually. That's one of the main, the main front end developer on that. Uh, I'm mostly front end focused in my development work. Uh, I mean, I guess technically maybe a bit full stack, but uh, I tend to be more front end focused, really, to be honest. Uh, uh, and yeah, more recently, just just uh, doing specializing a bit more in uh, FreeJS, A3, and that sort of thing as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. So, what do you like most in uh, uh, in the projects that all that you already did? Um, I like projects that that have a certain visual aspect. Probably, I mean that makes sense because I'm a front end developer, of course. Uh, something that's going to be uh, the projects I've just been working on is basically uh, it's called uh, it's like a model of uh, 3D model of a of a street in Glasgow, it's for the um, COP26 thing, um, and it's basically like a, uh, it's a, you place a model down and you get, it gets access to your camera on your phone, you place a model down, you have like a guided journey. So that was really interesting because it's very visual, it's very, there's a lot of interesting challenges of course to deal with with that and uh, yeah, I mean most of the time I like, with projects I like something that has a, a visual element, I suppose. Um, I like working on projects which I can feel invested in as well, I think. I like, uh, you know, like I like working on projects where I feel like I can understand what the, the vision is or the goal, uh, you know, sort of, sort of create a, a sense of meaning in what I'm doing, of course, I guess. So yeah. w- w- what other technologies you know? Um, so like I said, my, most of most of what I'm doing at the minute is in the JavaScript ecosystem. 
I have a background a little bit in WordPress development, but I don't really do it that much anymore. Uh, and I'm not really a PHP developer. Uh, I started off a long time ago uh, when I first started learning coding uh, was Java, but I've not done that for a long time. I mostly like obviously HTML and CSS because I'm a web developer. Uh, I use obviously there's a lot of libraries and frameworks to get your head around these days. So uh, the main JavaScript library uses React. Uh, I need to I, I do want to learn Vue. I know a little bit of Node and obviously using the package manager. Um, uh, yeah, and then more recently, like I said, for the last few years, I've sort of been doing developing my knowledge of uh, you know like WebGL uh, li JavaScript libraries like FreeJS, uh, A-Frame. Uh, and yeah, I'm sort of, it's sort of interesting to sort of look into more the potential like, areas of growth of AR and VR and stuff. So uh, I've also wanted to be able to be learning, like I mentioned briefly before. Uh, a long time ago, I used to work on Storyline Articulate. Uh, I did one of the first jobs was doing that. Uh, I also mess around a bit with Unreal Engine too. So and a little, I have a little bit of a sideline in doing like Twine interactive fixtures. So, yeah, that's that's. That's like a sort of broad smattering of what I do, I suppose. Oh. Technology, I suppose. Nice. So you are in the front end developer uh, development from long time. So I'm sure you might have yeah. uh, worked uh, on uh, different uh, user interfaces. So what is the, yeah. the, the, the best user interface that uh, you like uh, in the internet other than that you worked on and uh, what are the yeah, functionalities yeah. what are the functionalities that attracted you and uh, tell me about something that uh, you understand more more about front end okay so uh, there's a lot of a lot of questions there actually in terms of like uh, a user interface or user experience i like um, it's, it's quite a difficult question actually because generally if it's like a if it's quite a um, you know, pain-free experience, and you, you do, you know, uh, I kind of know actually. And so, well, I'll go to the second part actually, because I'm struggling to think of a specific example. So, uh, the second part was about what what do you think helps the user experience, right? Wasn't it? Yes. So, I guess I mean, obviously, uh, how ensuring it's going to work across as broad a range of devices as possible is obviously essential these days with responsive design and everything. Um, uh, obviously, um, I guess just uh, making visually interesting elements in the page, making it stand out somehow. Obviously, color combinations is always important, you know, uh, and having those color um, combinations reflect, you know, what the what the site's trying to communicate. Um, I think increasingly, probably. Um, I mean, I guess it depends what sort of site you're making, because for, for a lot of sites, it's, you know, if it's, if, it's like a, oops, if it's like a brochure site or something, then they tend to have a sort of cookie cutter look, maybe in some respects, because it's, you know, it's just like the um, grouped elements and some similar. Um, it's a difficult question, actually. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll go on to the next one, actually. So I don't know, I'm a bit muddled there with my answer, but yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so creative coder. So yeah. What 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 are the types that you uh what are the types and uh, what are the uh I mean doing something different always. What what actually you learn from this? Yes. Yeah, so um I like novelty. I think I'm drawn to always learning something new in programming and something interesting you know something uh, I mean like because I'm quite a visual thinker I like producing projects which uh, have some aspect of visualization in them I've worked a lot on uh, little visualization projects in the past I did not not too long ago I did like a, a project with FreeJS which was like tracking it got data from uh, YouGov uh, API and basically uh, got and fetched that data and then just made like a visual map of cases of COVID cases in the UK. 
So I, I like just working on interesting things like that where, you know, it's sort of, I think it's always good to broaden your, your knowledge as a programmer as well and just experiment and try new things. Uh, and it keeps it interesting as well because, I mean, uh, a lot of the time, if you, once you get to a certain level of, you know, uh, knowledge and ability, you want to keep things interesting and progress into the next stage, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's, that's my answer to the question, I suppose. Do you have any experience that you cannot forget as a coder? Say again, sir. Do you have any particular experience that you cannot uh, forget as a coder? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, this recent project I've been working on has been really interesting. I mean, it's been it's not been without its challenges because it's. I mean, though I'm f somewhat familiar with FreeJS, um, working with AR augmented reality has been uh, there's been a challenge really to be honest. Like just how, I mean, even just things like because um, the 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 app I just worked on implements um, has world tracking, so you you place an object and it gets access to your camera and you place it. Uh, but it actually, we actually struggled a bit at first with the um, uh, the the tracking system we we're using and, and that. So it was an interesting challenge and obviously always. Um, in terms of like memorable things I've worked on, a Cultura with sticky pixels is a very big thing I worked on. That's you know, it's a game with a lot of people. It's this game on Steam. It's got a big community behind it. Um, so that was a really formative experience in terms of um, developer experience. Uh, I worked on a, a lot. One of my first like e-learning development jobs was doing redeveloping and designing some uh, e-learning modules for a disability charity and that was that was good and then another one I remember was uh, one of the first jobs actually was working for a disability charity well basically one of the first websites I made <laughs> outside of college when we came out of college or whatever was um, accessible accessible access a website with accessibility as the, the core um, functionality really because it was for disabled people primarily um, so that was quite an interesting experience. But yeah, there's been a few things really, and uh, definitely Cultura was an interesting format of thing to work on because that was, like I said, that was a that was a React application, and uh, I had to develop quite a lot of functionality for that. Like we uh, developed basically a, an upload form for uploading artwork, I means so uploading images, previewing images, how they'd look in game, uh, also integration of Stripe and uh sort of basic sort of like almost like social network uh, functionality um that i mean that, that site's actually changed a bit now uh, since i i'm not there anymore but um so we were on react before and now we've gone into react and next year which is really nice but uh yeah i was glad to work on that it was really cool and I enjoyed it oh it got me a lot of experience as well since you so yeah so how fast you can uh, uh correct the errors that you get uh you are uh, into the game development yeah so um obviously that's just a part part and parcel isn't it of being a developer is uh running into bugs or errors um so i mean what i'm trying to do a lot more at the minute is um i mean it's just an, it's inevitable that you will come across these things of problems and errors i mean it's just part of developing anything really so I just try and I'm trying to learn a lot more about um, good uh, practices in terms of design patterns, architectural patterns, that sort of thing, really get my knowledge of the sort of deeper levels more uh, better, because then I guess that way you can avoid potential pitfalls. Um, but that's a long process, like it's long going. In terms of like debugging, I mean, you, you learn more the more you do with the debugging. Um, you know, obviously I'm a JavaScript developer, so sometimes I will do a console log <laughs> in several places just to, but I try and not over rely on that obviously, because that can get very messy as well. Um, but, um, I mean, all programming is problem solving, isn't it really? So it's, it's a case of just getting into that mindset of, um, which becomes autopilot for some problems, obviously, like, you know, if, um, you know, some some problems will you you'll have seen them a million times before, so you'll just immediately know that it's either like a um, 
I don't know, like someone referenced named incorrectly or something like you're know, de declaring a variable wrong or whatever, but like that just comes with time, doesn't it? I think. So, how much time you spend in a day uh, for programming? Uh, well, at the minute, I'm working on a contract. I've got another week left, so it's full time at the minute. So, uh, 9 30 till about 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, so, it's just a full time job, basically Monday to Friday. Um, it varies, so, but generally speaking, um, I work Monday to Friday, really. So, uh, I'm working mostly remote at the minute, I have been for the last few years, uh, which is quite nice and quite like that. I do occasionally go into the office that I'm working in at the minute, but it's not, um, uh, you know, it's not like every day. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so 16 to 25 is a big number, so nine years. So what you learned in this? Um, th 35, sorry, not 25, I'm 35. <laughs> but uh, a lot, obviously. Um, so, I mean, funnily enough, actually, when I was in university, we were taught JavaScript. So this would have been back in 2005, I was in university in Manchester. Uh, and we did learn a bit about JavaScript, but it wasn't uh, as prevalent on the web as it is. is today. Obviously, it was used a lot still on the web back in 2005, but uh, JavaScript like, is the main language on the web these days. Whereas back when I was at university, so I, 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 look and I learned JavaScript back in university, but I never really applied any of it for a few, even a few years. Um, it's only been really in the last maybe six or seven years that I've really tried to get good at JavaScript and learn more about it and get into it more of the different libraries, the frameworks and everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've also learned a lot looking like, and just, I think most of the time with coding, it's just like experimenting, playing around. Uh, and a lot, sort of like we were saying before, like, uh, you know, sort of, banging your head into problems and then just figuring out from that as a learning experience oh that's how you fix that and then once you've done that once or maybe even a few times it sort of gets cemented in your head you know so you sort of go on autopilot for certain things so that's good I think. so what are you other than programmer a few things really i write uh uh, I'm a writer. I've got my book here, actually. I'm just got a copy. So I, I write uh, sort of science fiction. This is a copy of my book. It's called. Uh, it's just a compilation of short stories. Some some I finished this year. It's uh, Suicide by Computation. It's called. It's uh, it's available on Amazon, actually. So if anyone watches this, and they want to pick up a copy. Um, so I do that. I do that in my spare time. It's sort of like um, it's. it's uh, these short, I mean, it's only something with the short story writing that I've been doing for the last, uh, I guess, six years maybe, I guess. Like I, I, I got a little bit of a background writing poetry, but I wanted to do more like short stories, They're mostly like science fiction, but with a sort of philosophical, um, surreal turn maybe. Uh, I paint, so I'm a painter too, but I'm a bit out of practice at the minute, but I've got a background painting too like sort of like abstract semi-abstract paintings of acrylic um music i made a bit of music electronic music in the past so i have a music project called broken god which is electronic music sort of ambient slash experimental electronic music i suppose um and yeah like i said i do the game dev as a hobby like an indie game dev um yeah, that's pretty much it for the hobbies I have. Um, so, yeah, quite eclectic, I suppose. But um, I, I like to keep busy, really. You know, just keep keep finding things to be interested in. Uh, of course, I like to read as well as because I'm a writer. So, uh, I love film too. So, there's that too. So you worked on uh, gaming projects and uh, you worked on other projects. Yeah. So, what do you like uh, the, the most? Uh, favorite project of yours and uh, why yeah. why that is your favorite yeah um do, 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 it's quite a difficult question i mean uh, for the gaming stuff i'm just going to quickly look at my itch 
So I recently completed a game which was a just an online game for interactive. It's not my favorite, but Noir Knights Vampire, which is like an interactive fiction game, play in the browser. It's like a vampire game. It's on my itch.io page actually, which is uh, Doctor Noir, as in like uh, dark in French. Itch.io. Itch.io. Um, and then I think. I did a game, Nourish Not for Art, I was quite happy with, which was an Unreal Engine project. Um, that was a, for a game jam, actually. That was quite cool. I, mean, I did a mobile game a while ago called Nano Maze, which I was pretty happy with. That was made with Unreal Engine. It's like a robots sort of Pac Man game. I did that in Unreal Engine. I got it <laughs> put it to mobile eventually. It took me a while because it was so difficult, but I got that one out there eventually. Uh, I made an old, old interactive fiction called Glitch, which is quite interesting. You can check all these out on my itch, it's dotsnoir.io. Most of them are free, nearly all of them are free actually, you can just pay what you want for them. Uh, game dev is something I carry on working on. Uh, I'm working with a publishing company and a writer actually on a, on a project, but we're not, we're sort of early days still for that, we're sort of ongoing. That's like a space sort of interactive fiction thing, thing but I don't know if I go on to say much more about that one actually but um yeah I mean I can't really pinpoint it to one I mean I've been quite busy I mean I think with with all the projects I do like I'm um, you know obviously you're happy with them to varying degrees because um you know sometimes things are you know a lot of the time it comes down to like how much you, sometimes you put more effort into other things sometimes you just haven't got the time to especially with the i mean one hard thing with the game dev sometimes especially if you're doing a full-time web dev job is finding the time in it to put the effort in because obviously game dev is quite a hard graft in a lot of ways to make something really stand out um but i have benefited from doing all that stuff because it's sort of helped me understand uh on a on some level, like how how to um, you know develop systems for the games and interactive experiences, I suppose. Like I've done a lot of these other things, which are like I saw sort of suppose like um, virtual environments that run in the browser. Like I've done some virtual art gallery things. I did a project called Lockdown Art. Let me just double check the URL. I think it's so we're doing lockdown. Uh, me, I'm, I'm in an art group, and we did a. Uh, we did a like a it with play canvas we did a lockdown art exhibition which is basically like um a sort of 3d uh gallery experience that runs in the browser i, I worked on that as a, as a sole developer so that, that was quite fun yes yeah, so lockdown hyphen art if you want to check it out actually lockdown hyphen art.com and it's basically a play canvas um 3d gallery experience runs in browser and yeah, things like that are always fun, and obviously doing stuff like that's helped me like sort of, um, press, you know, sort of grow my career a bit in terms of like working on free uh, WebGL stuff, free JS programming, and um, doing what I'm doing now, which is like sort of working on projects for companies doing like yeah, free JS and stuff. So it's been definitely useful to do that stuff. Uh, and obviously it's going to become a lot bigger soon because of, uh, I mean, obviously Facebook are investing tons in this metaverse idea, which I'm sure you're aware of, and that's going to, so yeah, it'll be a growth area, won't it, really? So it should be interesting, I guess. So right now you're working on AR development and uh, 3D mm -hmm. yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, yeah, for now, I mean, I'll, I'll probably, like, like I said, most of what I've been working on for the last uh, few years has been uh, React development. Obviously, there's a big demand for React developers, so that's always good. Uh, and then, yeah, more recently, I've been... <laughs> I mean, the FreeJS and, like, WebGL gra graphic stuff has been more of a hobby of mine for a few years, but it's actually starting to turn into a bit of a nice niche, so uh, I like that. But I did work hard on it, like, <laughs> like you, I really, like, pushed it in the last few years just learning all that stuff and doing little side projects and stuff so uh, it's good because it feels like it's sort of starting to pay off a bit now which is nice plus enjoy it I mean I really enjoy it this like as much as I do enjoy re some react development it's it's not quite as exciting as doing graphics and visualization and stuff really to be honest I don't but yeah 
So what you like in yourself uh, as a programmer? What is the best quality that you have? Uh, and tell me about uh, the way you look at uh, yeah. uh, uh, look at uh, the, the errors that you get or uh, uh, the things that you see on your screen, the way you look. So, so you're saying about how I approach coding, right? I guess like how how was the positive yeah. elements to that? Which which uh, tells uh, which tells your problem solving ability. Yeah, yeah. So I tend to take quite a method, a methodical approach. I think uh, I tend to be quite creative as well. Uh, I try, like in general, I'm quite a creative person. So um, I try and strike a balance between. Figuring out what's good uh, in terms of uh, good design patterns, knowing, having awareness of sort of um, the best ways and most optimized ways of doing things. This is an ongoing process and it's never perfect, but, you know, trying to do that. Obviously, I think I try and have a good approach to detail. I think I'm quite motivated and, you know, if something is doing, I'll get it. I'll try and get it done as soon as I can. Um, but also trying to, uh, I am very consciously trying to uh, make sure that I document any code that I work on, not to over the top, but like just make sure that it's documented. And obviously maintain maintainability is important as well in terms of uh, you don't want to just like accrue a bunch of technical debt from having to, I mean, realistically, sometimes you do have to come to situations where you have to cut corners but where possible just try and avoid that as much as possible i suppose um but yeah and obviously like i was saying before just trying to learn about um paradigms and programming you know obviously that's an ongoing thing uh i mean obviously you use stack overflow sometimes but obviously don't over rely on that i suppose too is that i guess that's quite common uh Common knowledge, you know, don't just over rely on it. It's good to go. It's good as a resource. Stack Overflow is great, but um, I think there's a way to use it as well. You know, you have to like navigate through it, understand what the exam. If you find something that solves your issue, maybe does understand how it works first, and then obviously um, utilize it. I mean, it's a great resource because it's you, you will learn things from there that. Yeah, that's, that, which is good, but I think probably one of the worst things you can do is just copy and paste from there and just you know slap it in. I think you need to try and understand how it's functioning as well under the surface on some level. But yeah, that's, that's that. So what is game development for you? So it's well mo mostly for me. I've been doing, like I said, uh, only really small Unreal Engine projects. Uh, and I'm using blueprints, I'm not using C++. I wish I knew C++, but uh, maybe I'll learn it one day, but I've never really got around to it. Uh, and also making web-based games. I've been making more JavaScript games recently, so either programming them myself with A-Frame or making, uh, using Play Canvas, which I have a subscription to, which is a great engine, actually. It's in the cloud. It's quite accessible. You, mean, you still have to write JavaScript, of course, for the functionality, but it's got like a cloud editor, which is a great feature. So I really like Play Canvas. Uh, and then interactive fiction. So I think it's three things for me, game dev, in terms of like the end stuff I use. So Unreal Engine, Play Canvas, and then my own bespoke sort of JavaScript projects. Um, I probably should have mentioned before, actually, I have, a, I have my own YouTube channel, uh, Noir Nerd, which is where I, I sort of, do tutorials and showcase game dev and creative coding projects actually. So I guess for anyone watching, just check it out, I suppose. Now I've got like, and that sort of covers more the, uh, it's like a mixture of code overviews of projects I worked on explaining what I've been working on. Tutorials, there's a few tutorials, like I did a tutorial recently on creating a sort of 3D solar system in Play Canvas. So it's just from beginning to end, just with explanations of what I'm doing. And, so I've been doing that. That's, that's been really useful because it's like it's, I like doing that sort of learning resource for other people, helping other people out. So there's everything on there from like sort of using like a charts library for ActJS to like um, yeah, like doing a 3D solar 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 system project or something. So yeah, it's a bit varied. Suicide by computation. Yeah. 
strange name, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Why this so, name and uh, what made you to write this book? How much time you took? Uh, well, all in all, it took a few years, actually. Um, it's not that long. It's 112 pages, but it's like nine short stories. Um, I wrote most of it over the last two years. Um, some of the stories that I started a long time long time ago and then re edited them a bit. Uh, I was in, so I didn't mention before, I was in Moscow actually for almost two years in Russia. So that's where I wrote most of it. Um, I think the title may have been somewhat influenced by uh, COVID and sort of lockdown and everything and sort of the isolation maybe. Also just computation because I, I, I mean, obviously it's quite a strange title, Suicide by Computation, but I guess the idea and it's quite a shocking title because obviously suicide is not a nice subject. But uh, really, the the core one of the core ideas that's in the in the book is the idea of technology um, as a sort of destructive force, maybe or potentially a destructive force. Which obviously is weird because I'm a developer and I'm supposed to be really enthusiastic about it, but obviously you have to see the negatives in it as well sometimes. Which is why I use the fiction as a sort of um, platform for sometimes even. But uh, yeah, that's sort of why, I guess. I was actually going to call it maybe death by computation, but I decided to stick with the original idea. <laughs> but, yeah. So you worked on uh, uh, a lot of web projects, uh, web-based projects, and uh, I'm sure yeah. uh, the mobile mobile applications too. Uh, I've not really worked on like native Android apps or anything like that, or iPhone, no, not really done that. I like, uh, so, yeah, most of what I've worked on has been like, um, yeah, like sort of progressive web app stuff, I guess. But no, no, I've never really worked on specifically like a, you know, like a, I don't know, um, Android app. That, although I did do the, well, saying that, I actually did the Nano Maze, but that basically that um, that was all created in Unreal, and then I had to do all the build systems for to get it to work on Android. That was a learning experience, actually. That actually took me ages to get that working, to get the Unreal Engine project to all come, you know. So it would run in an Android phone like that took a long time. <laughs> and so it's quite funny actually because Nano Age Free, I, I mean, I did it as an experiment mostly. Uh, it's on Play Store, but it's like, yeah, it was, it was, it was quite, a, quite, quite a lot of stuff to try and figure out. Because <laughs> we, with, uh, from what I remember, because it's been ages ago since I did it, but with Unreal Engine when you could, like build it for mobile, it's. Uh, yeah, there's like there's loads of time when you know one thing's wrong, it just fails. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's good to learn though. So how you make things possible? Um, sheer bloody mindedness, I suppose, and then also uh, I like to I like building stuff, you know. Like I'm I'm a bit of a, you know like I'm like I said I'm sort of creative. I like tinkering. Uh, it's an engineering mindset, isn't it, really? So I have an engineering mindset of the creative side and just making stuff is fun, like just especially with code because you get to see, you get to literally make something appear on a screen that you've, uh, you know, that you've made come into being, which wouldn't have otherwise existed, which is a really rewarding process, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, and if, you know, it's, it can be frustrating as well, though, to be fair. I mean, obviously, like, it can be, you know, there are moments when you all feel like banging your head against a brick wall, but definitely when you get something working that you've been working on for a while, it's a very rewarding feeling for sure. So, yeah. Do you remember your first project? First project? Um, uh, do you think, do you mean like first ever experience yeah. of coding? Yeah. Funnily enough, my first experience with coding or scripting was, uh, do you remember this game, uh, Neverwinter Nights? I don't, know if you, I don't know how old you are, but it's an old game, an RPG. There's a game I used to play on my computer. And this is quite funny, so I'll go into this. So my background when it comes to actually like doing creative stuff on a computer is actually working with the build engine in Duke Nukem 3D, Neverwinter Nights module builder, and... Uh, messing around with that basically. So I used to build levels. Duke Nukem basically, an old FPS game, had this uh, build engine where you could build your own levels and you could sort of create scripted events and stuff. Not with code, but just like with this 
and it's like gooey. Uh, and then I got into Neverwinter Nights, I think when I was about 17, I got really into it. And it had this thing called the Module Builder, and you could basically build your own sort of uh, RPG, like Dungeons and Dragons adventures. And as part of that, you could create your own custom events, scripted events and such. So I had this scripting engine, which I think was based on C from what I remember. So I got really heavily into that uh, because I just wanted to make better adventures, better modules. Uh, this is probably around about the time I just, just before I went to college as well to study uh, just uh, IT. Um, and yeah, I just got into it that way. And then to the web side of things, I mean, I guess at some point I would have just learned HTML and CSS when I was at college. Um, one of the yeah i mean in terms of like really early websites i worked on they were probably horrendous i think it was a long time ago so it was like um I've, i think one of the first things i worked on actually was a GeoCities website if you could. <laughs> that's just like really long ago when i was like 14 or something so uh yeah which thankfully doesn't exist anywhere anymore but uh, you know like GeoCities was just like a, what you see is what you get web editor thing and i think i just made some stupid website about um I don't know, tom green i think it was into tom green at the time <laughs> the comedian but uh yeah i mean yeah so basically my entryway into coding actually was in a funny way was actually never in a night so sort of got me interested and hooked in on it so yeah quite nerdy but it's true <laughs> So as a uh, game developer, when you see other games uh, in the market, so what what actually, what firstly attracts your eyeballs? Interesting setting, story. Uh, one game I've really been getting into recently, I need to start playing again actually, is Disco Elysium. I don't know if you've heard of that one, but it's like a, uh, it's like a sort of role, CRPG role-playing game. It's set in a post-apocalyptic world, and you sort of play a detective with a sort of amnesia but it's just it's really well written so i'm really drawn now to setting good story obviously good graphics graphics are important but not necessarily i don't necessarily need like top of the range 3d graphics to get a, a buzz from a game like disco elysium for example is like um isn't it's not really 3d it's like top down but it's got a really interesting graphical style um, I mean, a lot of the games obviously grew up with like FPS, like Quake, Quake 2, Quake 3, whatever, uh, which I love as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I try, generally a lot of what I play these days is just uh, any game that I find which looks interesting. Like I, obviously, I worked for an indie game dev company as well with Occupy White Walls, so I used to play that a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, generally speaking, I'm drawn to anything that seems original, well made, and... Uh, has an interesting setting. You you want to create uh, your own game one day or write a book about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I've got more ambitions for the, the game dev to maybe make something a bit bigger. A long time ago, I wanted to make like a space sim game, which I mean, sort of made some early prototype of that, but obviously that's ridiculously ambitious for one developer, so it never really took off. Um, I mean, to be honest, it's more a question of time because uh, obviously maybe one day when I get more time to be able to dedicate to a game project, I'll try and think of something creatively, you know, really good and dedicate, like, you know, I'm going to do a year on this and not do anything else. And I think that's probably the only way to make a really good game, and especially if you're a solo, because, I mean, I think unless... Because it's a lot of work to make a game. It's really a lot of work to make a really good one that's gonna, you know, be quality. Will take a long time. Um, so it's probably it may be something I'll do in the future. Uh, but for now, you know, the reality is I need uh, to get you know have money coming and have income still. So the web and um, you know graphics programming stuff is is the is what's bringing in the bacon as it were. But yeah, I'd like to one day make more games. Uh, I mean, like I said, I have got a game project in the works at the minute. We're gonna, I'm working in collaboration with a writer on, but um, I'll probably be working on that more uh, later this month, actually. But yeah, games take a long time, though, as well. Like, realistically, like to make anything that's half decent, it takes a few years at least, usually. Yeah, 
it's a slow process. Is there any particular thing that you didn't uh, see in any game that you saw with your eyes that you wanna put or that you wanna mm. make change? Like, like you mean like a, a concept in a game or a sort of idea? Yeah. Any yeah. anything. Anything that is that only you can put that nobody did. I tried a while ago. I tried to do like a sort of uh, I did this a prototype in Unreal Engine, which is basically like a do you know a mind map where you sort of map out your mind. Uh, you map out like thoughts and concepts and loop and link them together. I had the idea of doing a 3D visualization tool, which basically did that. Uh, I got somewhere with it. So basically, you'd be in this 3D environment. The idea was that you'd have music. You'd be in this sort of 3D environment, and if you wanted to like brainstorm. You could put a node down, which is like a sphere that you can spawn in. You could add notes to it. It was very basic, the one we, the very early prototype I did. And then you'd have, you'd be able to refer back to that, and then you'd basically just have a you know, like an archived version of this brainstorming session. A bit, I mean, I guess sort of it'll be like what um, companies would be wanting to do with some like metaverse apps, where you basically got a, a visualization of a of a mental space, I guess. I did I did that like a like a, a sort of prototype for that a long time ago, uh, but then um, yeah I just lost steam on that project unfortunately. I don't have, I don't even think of the projects that they're files anymore. But uh, something like, I mean I think I'm quite good at like coming up with crazy ideas like that, but a lot of the time the implementation can be really <laughs> you can sort of come and get to the point where you realise the implementation of this is going to be very hard, you know so. I think an ongoing struggle with developers is like making sure that um, so, some side, basically what I'm saying is some side projects are unfortunately destined to die, basically. But you can usually stick the good ones out to the end, I suppose. But yeah. So gaming, game, gaming industry. So what do you say about it? What do I think about the gaming industry? Yeah. Um, I think it's in an interesting place now. Obviously, there's a lot more people developing games, which I think is all good. I think we're in a sort of golden age in terms of the tools we've got access to. You've got Godot, Unity, Unreal Engine. Like, how many engines are there out there now? Uh, so many engines, so many options. Uh, you can just you can write everything yourself. You can use an engine. You can you can you know. It's, I think it's in that sense, like the tooling sense, like game devs in a really good place because it's so easy to get access to the tools most of them are free and they're more advanced than they were ever were uh i think it's yeah so yeah, it's a lot more accessible now like i think even when i was messing around with do level design and stuff a long time ago with Duke Nukem, like it was it was still quite a niche thing and i think a lot of people probably got into the game design industry game dev game design industry then from being level designers or doing modding and stuff whereas now i think it's a lot easier to to find your way in there um i think the indie scene's in a very good place there's loads so many interesting games you can find is there something for everyone like if you've got an h.io or steam or whatever like there's, there's there's a game for everybody um in terms of like the big i don't really play many triple a games to honest anymore like i do obviously sometimes i will but most of the time most loyal plays like indie games and, and stuff really uh i mean let's be honest like i've seen the last because i've been so busy with work when i've been playing that many games recently but i played a bit of the remastered quake not long ago which was good i like that there's a bit of nostalgia actually in that but uh yeah Sorry. Is there any particular thing that uh, made you took uh, that made you take a long time to fix it? Uh, particular problems. Yes. Um. Just trying to think. Uh, I guess sometimes. Uh, it doesn't necessarily take a long time to fix, but I know that certainly sometimes, uh, and it's becoming less of a problem actually, but sometimes with uh, CSS, making sure it works and everything can be a bit of a pain. Um, 
but it's a lot e- it's a lot easier now in a lot of ways it depends what you're working on but obviously like if you and it depends on the code base you're working on uh and in a lot of ways it's a lot more forgiving with css these days because you've got lots of things like uh, bootstrap or tailwind make, which sort of abstract away a lot of the um css you'd otherwise have to write i guess from, from scratch um and you know in general like my knowledge of css is fairly good um i guess in terms of like problems that always pop up um or difficult to solve uh, i mean sometimes if there's like a webpack thing that can be quite difficult to debug like figure out um but yeah i don't know i mean it's it's it's, it's quite a hard question to answer because it's like i don't know i mean obviously i do come across problems but it's hard to identify anything specific that comes up quite a lot uh yeah sorry i'm a bit rambling so what are the questions that you ask to yourself about gaming and game development um is what i'm making would i want to play what i'm making what's the novelty factor the, 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 the questions uh, that questions that you ask to yourself about yeah, yeah so so uh for game dev um i'd say is this fun or is it at least interesting um that's the main things really is there a interesting mechanic at play or at least a story or assets i mean because obviously it's everything you have to try and hit every um sweet spot you know with the graphics the sound um i mean a lot a lot, a lot of the reason i've been focusing a bit more recently on interactive fiction is because it's quite easy to make i mean i use twine which is very basic um interactive fiction engine to use it's not hard at all quite fast you can get some you can get something that works up pretty fast it's just you know it's just html at the end of the day um and I f- i'm quite enjoying that but saying that i do in- also enjoy just doing the more abstract sort of like 3d stuff especially the something i've been doing a lot more recently is the uh, javascript games and 3d javascript games which can be challenging especially if you write them from scratch uh, obviously so like i said some of play canvas makes it a lot more forgiving but uh, like I did, um, I don't know if you know this game jam, this game jam called JSK13 Games, but it's like um, it's a game jam where you have to make a JavaScript game in under 13 kilobytes. So I did a uh, VR entry for that, which was called Superposition, which was definitely challenging because it had to be under 13 kilobytes. Uh, game jams actually are something I really enjoy because they really push you to your limits. Like you, you've got a set amount of time. Often you have a set theme. I found that really useful to do. So a lot, some, a lot of my games actually have come out of game jams. And I think if anybody is an aspiring game developer, it's something you should definitely do. Like every few months is do a game jam. You know, you've got maybe four days or a week. I mean, with Ludum Dare, it's like, I think, three days. They give you a theme and you've just got to bang something out as fast as you can in three days. So, I mean, as long as you've got lots of coffee and it will, then you can usually get it done. But it's... It's a good challenge. It really puts you um, in the hot spot, and you have to get something done. So it's a good thing to do. I think. So the projects that you worked on, uh, why why do those projects uh, have a demand in the market? Have you ever thought? Um, I don't really think about it. Well, it's funny actually. Like I just look at my stats because like some of the games that I would expect, some of the games that I think are my better games. Uh, aren't necessarily that as popular like i think like one of the most popular games i've got on my itch.io is is a really stupid game i made called nazi zombies which is like literally a game guru project that didn't like a one or two nights just as a bit of a joke but it's just like uh yeah but yeah but then i say that i'm just looking at the numbers here Torn was quite a popular one. That was quite because that was quite unique, unique. So that was basically a dating simulator in 3D, but it was set in hell. So you basically have four potential suitors, I think it was. And you talk to each one of them. And you, it was a lot of data games. It was a game jam thing I did over three days. 
But that, that's in 10 collections on, on itch.io. It's been downloaded, viewed about 437 times, so it's quite popular in terms of my stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's like it's hard to predict, like because you know I, I don't know exactly. I mean, I try and most of the games I make have either a sense of humor. They're either they're either quite humorous games, or they've got they're int- they're very serious in some ways, or they're like arcade. Like I have three basic modes, like so it's either it's like stories, a bit weird, humor, or quite serious sci-fi stuff, I guess. Uh, but yeah, in terms of what what the market wants, I have no idea. I just sort of, I just have an interesting idea and then just think, well, let's see if I can make this. That's how it usually works. Uh, yeah. So you're working on uh, the user interface, the front end from long time. You saw a lot of mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, the the user interfaces uh, with your eyes. So what do you think uh, that is uh, drawing the attention of the uh, people uh, of the games that you developed and uh, which age group which age group are connecting with uh, which yeah. uh, kind of user interfaces which uh, front end uh... so i mean it varies i think i think probably i think a lot of time the subject matter is going to change the audience as well so for the game stuff my subject matter tends to be well more well, recently it's been vampires so there were two vampire games um the humorous games are probably going to draw a younger audience, I suppose. Uh, I had one comment not long ago saying that they. So I did for the last game I made. I made quite. I made. I drew. I like sort of hand drew and painted on a digital app all the sort of artwork for it. I had like a sort of expressionist art style. So I've been doing that a bit more recently just to try and mix my art and game dev, I suppose. But in terms of like what you know how to. So what was the question again? I just lost it over there. Can you repeat the question? I just lost my train of thought halfway the, through. The, the, the age group you gave the answer. Right? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really hard. I don't really know, to be honest. Like I've had, uh, oh, I know on my itch.io, I created this game called Freak. And I had uh, some, I think it was a young teenager play it with his dad. He did like a YouTube video, which is quite cool to see. Uh, but in, in truth, I don't actually know. I don't even have the analytics on it. Uh, I mean, I'm going to guess, in general, it's your typical, um, you know, gamer who's into indie games. You just, yeah, in general, it's like male 15 to 35, 36, whatever years old, I guess, isn't it, generally speaking. Uh, but I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, some of my games have mature themes, that's for sure. So they're not, they're, not all of them are necessarily developed for younger ones um they're not really yeah they're not i mean some teenagers be able to get into them like probably like but they're usually either you know strange or they have some sort of vaguely adult themes uh they're saying that some of them are just arcade games or sort of just exploring an idea so it varies but generally speaking it's more like i guess it's more like for like 20 and up i guess So that was a long-winded answer, but it's a hard question, to be honest. So, yeah, that is what, uh, at last, what do you say about my questioning in this conversation? Mm-hmm. What do you oh, say about... Good. Yeah, no, it was good. You, you, you gave me some good questions. Oh, you, you stopped it now, yeah. Recording. Yeah, that was, that was good. That was all good. Uh, that, was, that kept got me thinking, yeah. And uh, have you seen any videos of mine on YouTube? Yeah, I watched a few. I watched a bit, a few of them. Yeah, I've not watched the whole one because I've just been really busy at work. But I did watch. Uh, uh, I did watch a few of the ones you put out already. Yeah, Look, I think I was watching one with a US software engineer. I watched a bit of that earlier today. Yeah. So yeah, which one was I watching? Let's have a look. It was one of a software engineer. So I watched some of that. Uh, yeah, no, it's good. I think it's great what you're doing. Um. Yeah, twenty uh, chatting with Texas twenty five experienced software programmer. So yeah, that's no, good. Uh, you're a developer yourself as well. You got a background in programming, it sounded like. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. No, I enjoyed that. Yeah. So can I can I put this uh, video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, give me full permission to do so. Yeah. 
And uh, I guess just um, probably the best thing to do would be to li link to my YouTube as well, actually. So my no one heard one. I'll send you the link if you want. Yeah, uh, send me send me your web links uh, and also yeah. the, the the book link. Uh, your book link and, and yeah, your yeah, website yeah. and your social media. I'll put in the description of this video. People who find our video on YouTube can see the uh, work yeah. that you're doing. Yeah, cheers. I'll send that on. So I'll just send it on Twitter, I suppose. I'll just send it on DM or something. Yeah. Uh, and also, cool. can I put this uh, audio and video clip on my podcast, website, internet, social yeah, media, yeah, everywhere absolutely. with your just, permission? Just go for it. Go for it. It's fine. That's fine. All good. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, uh, for giving me your time. Where, where are you? Where are you, by the way? You, what part of the world are you in? I'm from South India. It's uh, right. the state called Telangana. Yeah. Yeah, it's dark over there as well. It's dark here too. Yeah, I'm a software engineer. I I did masters in software in, uh, engineering and uh, graduation yes. in computer science and engineering. Just I'm doing these videos and interviews of different country people, not uh, who are into different professions, just to understand. Uh, what they think about different things so that when when I work in um, IT industry, I can build uh, the better user interface. It's, it's a great uh, idea. Front and back end. Yeah, it's and a great idea. I think it's a, it's a really good idea. I, I've, I sort of thought of doing that a while ago, like just get talking to, like doing a sort of podcast for programmers. It's a great idea, man. So yeah, good luck. I'll, I'll, I think I'm subscribed to your channel, actually. I'm pretty sure I did the other day. Let's check it, but I'll uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you for that. Anyway, that's cool. What do you What do you say in your YouTube channel? I saw your YouTube channel. Um, it's a bit of a mix of things. So it's like mostly uh, code overviews, sort of talking about my game dev projects. Uh, so it's a mix of like talking about how I've done stuff, tutorials. I'd started doing some sort of comedy stuff, but I don't really think I want to carry on doing that because I thought it was a bit. It's a bit cringe maybe but I, like i did some I, mostly it's tutorials really so it's like um everything from yeah like i said like everything from basic css to some javascript vanilla js using like the libraries as well like yeah play canvas free js that sort of thing i'm sort of specializing in play canvas has actually been really popular so i've sort of started doing that a bit more because th those videos got loads of views they got like I did a, well, it's, it's funny because like I did this FPS tutorial for Play Canvas, how to make a basic FPS, which was like a tutorial in a few parts, I think maybe four and five. It could, that became quite popular compared to my other videos, but I don't know, I'm not that happy actually with the end result. But so yeah, I'm just sort of trying to do more of the Play Canvas stuff because people seem to like that, I guess. Uh, and FreeJS maybe as well, because that's also. Good, but yeah. Yeah, then I'll, I'll share your links in the description. People who find the video can see uh, your work and uh, I, I uh, continue uh, doing what you're doing and I'm uh, sharing. Yeah, it's just, sort of, yeah. I'll, I'll follow your channel. It'll be good to have a, because it's, it's funny actually, because you know, like you'd think there'd be quite a lot of uh, content for like developer podcasts, like just programmers talking about programming. But there isn't that many actually. Like there, are, I know there's loads of channels which sort of do tutorials or like you know talking about projects and stuff. But there's not that many podcasts for programming. I found I've not really found many. I've put a few, but so yeah, it's good that good that, good that you're doing it at least because like yeah, it's quite hard to find it sometimes really to be honest. Sometimes uh, it's good to talk with uh, doctors, police officers, uh, army officers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I saw you books. did. Uh, you done some videos with uh, like a, I was a veteran or something, or a pilot or something. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, it's not all about the uh, talking to geeks, is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Thank well, you. cheers, man. Um, have a good evening. Uh, yeah, I guess just send us over the link when it's online and stuff. I guess. Yeah, I'll good. send you the link once it's uploaded. Cheers, man. All right. Yeah. Take Have care. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.